all of the air around me. Welcome to the next episode of Daughters of the King. And I would love to introduce you today to this incredible young woman. Her name is Kenzie Klein. We have a little bit of a connection. We are related. <laughs> Well, your, head, your dad happens to be my cousin. Um, so that is a cool opportunity now I have to be able to interview you today and just hear a little bit about who you are and what you were doing. So thank you for joining us on Daughters of the King today. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's an honor. So before we listen to you and everything that you're going to share with us today, I'm just going to help everybody understand um, who you are. So. You are a 24-year-old worship leader and vocal teacher. You graduated from Heritage College and Seminary in 2021. We have a little bit of that in common because I did do some stuff there at Heritage recently too. Um, you graduated with a Bachelor of Church Music and you have been in full-time ministry ever since. Uh, you began teaching virtual voice lessons right in the middle of the pandemic. You, I was so in awe of what you did, honestly, it was amazing. <laughs> But what happened is that even though the restrictions were there, once they were lifted, you were able to continue to grow um, despite the fact that it was online, it ended up working really, really well. So you do that with a whole bunch of different students uh, across the GTA. You are also a vocal instructor and adjunct faculty at Heritage College and Seminary. And you work as an itinerant worship leader to help churches in need of musical support on Sundays and also a part-time worship leader at Hope Bible Church, Markham. <sighs> My goodness, you are one busy lady. Um, your <laughs> mission, you are. Your mission is to serve the church, and I know that because I know I've known your heart for mm -hmm. years and years and years. Um, but you have this heart to raise up the next generation of musicians of the church, whether they're volunteering or whatever, if whether it becomes a career or not. So I have watched you do this with grace, um, perseverance, and it is remarkable. So I am so happy you're here today. Um, so maybe fill in the gaps of a little bit more about you, what you're doing, your family, um, other than what I just said. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I come from a family of musicians, which is where this whole thing was kind of born. Mm -hmm. So my dad is an amazing singer, a beautiful mm -hmm. worship leader. Um, mm -hmm. He pretty much taught me everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I live with my family. This is my home office um, in Grimsby, actually. So mm -hmm. a lot of my job is driving and traveling, um, mm -hmm. which I really enjoy, although it can get tiring at times. Um, yeah, I'm in a sure. family of six, so I have three younger siblings, um, two of which are away at school right now. So it's just me and my, my brother at home. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm trying to think what else. What else would be helpful to share? That's kind of the the gist of more the personal side of things. Mm -hmm. um, and since I graduated school, I've just been, yeah, it's been kind of a wild ride. Uh, mm -hmm. Didn't really expect when I was even going into heritage, I didn't expect any of this to be my life today. And so it's kind of crazy right. how God works. It um, is very much so. And I just, I love it. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, I do know your family quite well, but other people do not. Um, so maybe you can talk a little bit about your own personal faith journey. Um, mm. Yes, I know you grew up in a Christian home, but uh, talk about what you have experienced personally with God. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I would say um, growing up at a, at a church that really emphasized having your own personal faith mm. um, outside of your family's faith was right probably one of the most um, formational things in my faith walk. Yeah. So even in uh, junior high and in high school, I was just constantly being encouraged to pursue mm. faith for myself right. um, because I don't, I don't follow just the religious um, things that we do because we do them. Um, it's about knowing God and knowing who he is. And so I, that was, uh, very formational in my younger years. Oh, um, really and of cool. course, as one does in, in high school, I went to a public high school. And so there were tons of influences around me, um, positive and negative. Mm -hmm. of course. Um, and I would say uh, I, I felt very distracted in high school, um, especially in the later years. And so uh, yeah. going to heritage ended up being, I think, very valuable for my faith uh, based on where I was leaving high school. 
Um, mm. It was just to be fully immersed into a Christian community. It's a blessing, and I know that that's yeah. not possible for for everybody, depending on no, the kind of career you mm -hmm. choose to pursue. So I am very thankful for that because it really grounded me. Oh, um, yeah constantly having conversations about who God is and what he um, has designed for the church and you know what does it mean to have a calling on your life what does it mean to follow that uh, is having a calling on your life a real thing or have we made it like there's just so many conversations that happen so many conversations <laughs> yes so that was yeah. really valuable and uh, just continued to increase my faith um, mm -hmm. I think one of the struggles that I have always kind of had throughout my faith was um, for lack of a better word, maybe discipline. Um, I always felt a, a sort of guilt around my devotional time. Um, and so maybe there's some people listening to this who are like, yeah, that's me. Yep, that's um, I'm not the kind of person to get up every morning and read my Bible. That's just, it's always been a struggle and uh, mm -hmm. a source of, yeah, I think guilt for me. Um, in my faith. And so uh, that has been a really interesting journey um, just in my discussions with God and, and prayers and navigating what that looks like for me. And I think it does look different for every person. And so uh, determining that and becoming confident in that for myself was, was a huge deal in my relationship with God and kind of removing some of that guilt. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, if anybody listening yeah. can relate to that, I hope that's encouraging. Absolutely. So. I think I mean, anybody could relate to it um, for sure, regardless of their age or stage, because there is that sense of I better be doing A, B and C so I can be this next thing or be better. And so maybe actually that's a significant struggle I think people have. So what would you say to somebody, to a younger woman today that is right in the middle of figuring out how do I do this? How do I actually actively engage with God in my devotions? Does it matter when I do it? Does it matter where mm -hmm. I do it? Um, what would you maybe say to her to encourage her? Yeah, um, I think the, the biggest thing is not to compare yourself. Mm. Um, and I found I compared myself a lot to some of the biblical teachers that I would see online or even my friends in my community mm -hmm. uh, who would talk about really faithfully being in the word every morning at 8 a.m. <laughs> before work or before yeah. school. And I just remember feeling so discouraged. I'm not a morning person. I can't like, get up no. early for the love of me. <laughs> I always joke. I set like 10 alarms every morning and I still don't get up before the second I need to. Um, but I also, um, sometimes I struggle to understand God's word. Like if I'm reading through a psalm or if I'm reading through a certain mm -hmm. book of the Bible, um, I'm not really gifted with... Um, you know, there, there are some spiritual gifts and I think one of them is just understanding God's word, having like insight, specific insight into mm -hmm. some of the difficult passages. I'm not one of those people. And so I always felt like I needed some kind of supplementary uh, mm -hmm. material to help me understand God's word, which was mm -hmm. even discouraging a little bit in and of itself. Um, and so one of the, yeah, one of the things I would say for somebody who's trying to figure out what fruitful time with the Lord looks like mm. is you have to know yourself and you don't, I don't actually think God is calling you to change your personality in order to spend time with him. And so for me, Great point. that looks like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it just helped me a lot to think of it that way. And what that ended up looking like was I'm a night owl. Um, and so, and I actually really like to read at night. And so oftentimes, I actually don't put pressure on myself to do it every day, mm -hmm. but oftentimes I started to um, read my Bible before bed um, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a routine. And that also became really important to me because mm -hmm. if I felt a pressure to um, pray a certain prayer and then read a certain length of a passage and then right. journal a certain amount and then it just, it so work. many restrictions, it just right. doesn't work for me. Um, yeah. Some people thrive on that. And that's important to know about yourself as well. If you do need a routine, exactly. it's important. Um, but for myself, I started to just sit down with no expectations. Mm. Um, I started reading the Bible in Genesis and just started reading through. Um, right. And it was a little bit life-changing because I was, I was always working with this system of, okay, I have to think about what are my takeaways? What did I learn? What's <laughs> I don't actually think that's that's necessary every time you read the Bible. 
Sometimes mm-hmm. it's just, I just got to get these words in my mind and they yes. will change me. They will shape me. Um, yes. They will do their work in me because we believe that the Bible is living and active mm-hmm. and um, God yes. works through his word in us. We don't have to do the work. We don't have to, you know, so um, I, I was never really taught that. I don't think many people maybe speak about the word that way, mm-hmm. but it has been life changing for me. It's absolutely changed my relationship with God and, and the word, because I believe that now I approach the word knowing that it will renew my mind, mm-hmm. not because God will be angry with me if I don't read a chapter a day, <laughs> you know? So yes, that's my yes. and it will not return void, right? It will not. Yeah. And I think what you're saying is so important because we each can approach the Bible at a different time in a slightly mm. different way. And it's interesting because I enjoy reading as well. And mm. I pick up a book. Let's be logical here and simplify. But you start at the beginning and you yeah. go to the end. And yeah. so what is, <laughs> with, what is it with the Bible that we can't pick it up like it's a book? I mean, it's the word of God and read it from cover yeah. to cover. Why is it so hard to do that? I was talking yeah. with somebody even the other day. They've been trying so hard to read through the Bible and and I've done many plans where you start in Genesis and then you do a Psalm or a proverb and then you do the New Testament. And I've tried with audio. And mm-hmm. um, sometimes, like you said, you you want to take notes of the takeaways and journal about it. And sometimes you just need to listen. And I found that actually being older, I'm just listening, trying to just listen to the word of God and letting it change me as mm-hmm. I'm listening instead of worrying about everything else I have to do after to make sure I'm applying it because it will come the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. It will come. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe based on that, who would have been or is maybe a significant influence in your life that has helped Mm -hmm. you on your spiritual journey? Um, this is kind of a cheesy answer, but my parents, (laughs) it's not cheesy (laughs) at all. Um, It's not so, that's a gift, right? I feel very, very grateful for them. Um, they have been absolutely a rock. Mm-hmm. Collectively, they have they have been a rock in my life. Um, my mom is an example of someone who is in the word every day at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, uh, she found a routine that works for her, and that encouraged me to find a routine that worked for me. Um, and my dad is someone more like me who approaches the word with a little bit more of like a a Mm -hmm. free flow kind of thing. Um, And so having their example, not only in their relationship with the Bible, God's word, Mm -hmm. um, but also just the conversations we've had over the years, hundreds and thousands of conversations (laughs) about faith. And they, you know, they kind of have helped me wrestle through my own doubts, Mm -hmm. my own struggles and insecurities. And um, yeah, I think, something that can be hard to find but i would encourage any young woman to find are people in your life who you respect for yeah. their wisdom and their maturity but also people that you can fully be honest with about mm-hmm. everything yeah. you're feeling and thinking and people yeah. who will just kind of walk through that with you mm-hmm. and so for me yeah that has been my parents my whole family but specifically my parents have really mentored me in, yeah. in the faith I'm very thankful for that yeah, no, I would agree. I mean, that's what we want. We want iron, as the Bible says, mm-hmm. iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another. And I can say that 100% with, with your mom and your dad, just how they've walked with us through all of our journeys and ups and downs mm-hmm. and been faithful. And um, it's been really, really beautiful to have that family connection to strengthen one another through all of those hills and valleys that we go through. And it's it's a gift. So I'm very grateful for it and for your family, for sure. I'd really love to dig in a little bit about your heritage journey, because I think a lot of young women will be um, quite excited to hear about the opportunity that kind Mm. of you didn't expect going into heritage, um, but you had all of this musical gifting and the experience, but yet God used it in quite a mighty way in your time, which has led to what you're doing now. So maybe you could talk a little bit about this almost like a worshipful journey that you have been on um, and how this can encourage a young woman who might just be on the cusp of thinking, do I go to school for this? Can I go to school for this? That type of thing. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. This was a crazy journey. Um, 
starting in grade 12, which mm-hmm. was applying to different places and everybody, you're all in the same boat, which I think is really mm-hmm. yeah. encouraging. Grade 12. You're trying yeah. to figure out what yeah. the heck do I do yeah. with my life. <laughs> um, and for me, uh, growing up, I was always very entrepreneurial. So I loved business and the idea of marketing and the idea of mm. um, trying to kind of build something from nothing. I was very crafty. And so that mm. looked like I started um, a sewing business. And then I started. I, a thing. <laughs> I, I started think I a purchased that. Business. You did. You absolutely did. <laughs> yeah. um, and it was just, it, you know, they were hobbies that turned into business. But I was always very fascinated by. So you're telling me I can just do something I love yeah, and then make money from it? Really? Yeah. You're like, really? Um, <laughs> it was fascinating just as a young mind, you know, learning mm-hmm. all of these things and how business works. And so naturally I went to apply to business schools. Um, mm-hmm. I applied to Heritage at the encouragement of some of the leaders in my youth group at the time. Mm-hmm. My dad suggested it, um, my, my youth leader, but then also the band leader. I was involved in mm-hmm. the worship team as a youth. Um, right. the youth worship team and so the band leader for that just encouraged me and and uh the youth pastor just mentioned it and so mm-hmm. not really knowing what heritage was or what it would bring right. i just kept hearing heritage music program and so i applied mm-hmm. didn't really think much of it and then from my perspective now in hindsight looking back it kind of feels like i just blacked out and then woke up on campus at heritage <laughs> and i i really don't know how else to explain it Getting to Heritage was really um, kind of a miracle. Um, At this point, I didn't want to do worship leading. I had this idea in my head that I really didn't want to work at a church. Um, I think going to public school, um, there was just this idea about being like working at a church and kind of isolating yourself from Mm -hmm. the rest of the world that I wasn't attracted to. I didn't like that. and I felt kind of jaded towards it because of that. And so ministry is not on my mind. Music was just this hobby that I like to do. And so I applied and like, it, it was kind of bizarre. Um, but oh, I woke works, up, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, which is encouraging because then I knew that it was his plan. Like I yeah. didn't necessarily want it, but I found myself taking these steps. And all of a sudden I kind of realized Okay, I think I think I know where this is going. And so throughout my years at Heritage, I still like vocally, verbally to everybody around me was resisting the idea of being a worship leader. I don't know why, I just was. Um, and so throughout my years there, God started to show me um, the ways in which maybe music in the church need help, need encouragement. Um, now being in uh in this ministry i'm realizing there aren't a lot of people who um are desiring full-time music ministry um Mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who would like to but feel Mm -hmm. maybe insecure or don't know what the place would be for them um it's a very public ministry and so if you wrestle at all with stage fright you're gonna be running for the hills you know yeah Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think the Lord started to show me some of these things and really developed a passion in me for encouraging other people to just go for it. Right. Um, The amount of times that I would get up on some kind of a stage or a platform to lead other people in worship and feel like so unprepared and unqualified to do so. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. afterwards people would say, you know that was that was lovely. Thank you for leading us. I would say that you were you're like you're, hold on a second. By that? <laughs> and Isn't so that then, beautiful? That, that's God at yeah. work, right? When you feel so weak, you know mm-hmm. He is strong, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I just started to get a passion to encourage other people to do the same, even if you feel unprepared. Um, mm-hmm. You know, my testimony is I often feel unprepared. Um, I often feel like I'm not meant to be doing what I'm right. doing or or I shouldn't say not meant to um, I'm not good enough to be doing right. what I'm doing um, right. and so that feeling just because you see someone doing it week after week that feeling doesn't go away right um, but that's where God's power is made perfect through you through yes. your weakness um, yeah. 
So that's kind of my, you know, you mentioned at the beginning, that's my mission. That's what I desire to just encourage people to do. That is so incredible. I love so much what you were doing because we all need somebody who has a passion to lead other people, especially mm -hmm. when we're thinking about the church context and God is using you mightily. You said yes, and you didn't know what was coming. And it's funny when you mention that, you feel like you just blacked out and all of a sudden you're on heritage. I <laughs> feel like I had a similar kind of story when I went to Trinity because I wasn't planning on going to Trinity Western, a Christian university. I was supposed to be here in Ontario. And it was almost like I woke up and I was there. And then with Heritage, it was like God did the same thing. And that's when I know it's God because you're like, hold on a second. What are you saying to me? And you're like, <laughs> I can't possibly do this. No, 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 no. But that's when it's like that leap of faith. And you're like, okay, God, I have to fully trust you. You're calling me to do this. It's on my heart. And plus the other thing that's really great is that you talk about having all these people speak life into you and encourage you, which also kind of affirms that this is the right path for you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that happened to me as well. And I think it's very encouraging to hear that you are so willing to take that leap of faith and God is blessing that and he's opening up doors and showing you what to do. Even if you can't see what's going on in the next five minutes, God knows. And I know that, you, that you're resting mm -hmm. in that. I can tell that for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. It's very hard. I don't want yeah. to make it seem like it's easy to just no. walk off into the deep end. So if you're in that situation, anybody who's watching or listening, it is it is hard and it is yeah. a daily kind of just trusting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it goes back to having people in your life that you can say, you know what, this is really hard and I need you to pray for me right now. I need you to check in on me um, and surround yourself with other people that are willing to just meet you right where you are, drop what they're doing phone call, prayer, whatever it is that you need, go up for a coffee and just talk about things. Because if yeah. you keep it inside of you, you're going to burst. It's going to happen, right? So yeah, it is so <laughs> true. true. Well, I know that uh, you have, you released a song. Was it, yeah. it was last year, Holy, right? Yeah, last May, yeah. And I can't wait to link that because it is phenomenal. So I have a question about some of your potential um, future projects. Do you have things that you're working on that you are excited about? Yes. Yes. Um, right now, the my goal, and I'm working with my dad, who's also kind of helping me produce my music, mm -hmm. um, is to just release projects of one song at a mm -hmm. time. Okay. Um, so I really enjoy writing music, but I find it difficult when there's like an expectation mm -hmm. that this thing that I'm sitting down to write, people are going to hear there's a perfectionism that starts to kind of speak in the back of my mind. Um, and so it's it's a slow process because I want to, um, I think sometimes in, in the Christian songwriting world, you'll hear lots of songs that have the same cliches or the same um, phrases that are repeated across lots of different songs. And so yeah. I have been feeling uh, that our music as believers needs to be the most honest mm. um you know so how do christians deal with disappointment how do christians right. deal with loss how do mm. how do christians deal with heartbreak um mm. and so i don't think we need to be running to the world to find those things um yeah. and of course when i say that i'm not saying that listening to other music is a bad thing that's not at all yeah. what i'm saying yeah absolutely um, but I think there's there's a chance for Christians to um, share some of their honesty and to not feel the need to be perfect. So some of my music will be um, coming up that's that's focused on encouraging Christians in their faith. But there's some other songs that I've written that are just a little more um, trying to be honest, trying to um, relate to people in our in our weaknesses yeah. <laughs> and struggles. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I'm excited. That's, That's amazing. I'm excited too. I can't wait to hear it. Um, and I know, and I think people would be uh, completely getting this, that we want songs that we can relate to. We don't want fluff. And mm. we want songs that are worshipful and that do change us and that are based on the Word of God and based on real life experiences. Um, and I think that's exactly what you do. And I'm very excited for your new projects coming out. You'll have to keep us posted. Um, yes. So we can share those um, in the next months to come. 
So, well, if there's any last word of encouragement that you could give a young lady today um, that might be struggling just with their faith um, and that taking that next step, is there maybe one last little bit of encouragement you could give somebody today? Yeah, there are. Uh, first, I would just like to give that person a hug <laughs> because I just know that it's it's really hard. Um, and so with that being said, probably the first step towards encouragement in your faith is to surround yourself with people who yeah. are encouraging. So one of the when I have found myself most discouraged is usually when I'm uh, not intentionally surrounding myself with people who are encouraging to my faith. Yeah. Um, and so that might be step number one. Um, yeah. But the second thing is, uh, even though it's hard to fight for a fruitful time with the Lord, uh, kind of like we were talking about at the beginning, whatever that looks like for you, um, sometimes it can be easier to just kind of like throw your hands up. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's difficult to find that time. Mm -hmm. And so I'll often even myself run to my phone, run to, you know, Netflix or whatever right. else it might be. Yeah. Um, and so I've really kept that phrase in the back of my mind, fight for fruitful time with the mm -hmm. Lord. Um, that. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, what an honor to chat with you today, Kenzie. Um, you are just a blessing and an encouragement to me and to my family and to now so many other women that are going to meet you for the first time. So thank you for being here today, for your honesty and for sharing your heart. I know that so many will be blessed. So thank you, Kenzie. And I look for forward having to having another conversation again. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon. Distracted again Numb to the pain Time doesn't stop for anyone's loss. Find me.